Mr. Rastai, we see this trend. Not only people are fighting hunger, but also obesity at the same time. Mm. How should we understand this apparent conflict of ideas, it seems? Yes, well, uh, we have paradox, to remember. Paradox, It's a paradox, isn't it? But we have to remember that obesity is also a malnutrition problem. Mm. It just happens to be an overnutrition problem. And in, in the case of uh, the epidemic sweeping the world, it tends to be associated with growing prosperity, growing urbanization, mm. and a shift away from physical activity. Mm. Dr. Ding, are the business are the businesses rather guilty for this? We see these sugar drinks everywhere, soda water everywhere around the world, and it's getting ever more popular from developed economies over the past few decades to developing ones. Are they the guilty ones? I think businesses is definitely part of the problem, but at the same time, they can be part of the solution. Because if you take, um, you know, Coca-Cola or Pepsi, um, of which half of which they sell sugar sweetened beverages. Sugar sweetened beverages is we have to say in the nutrition world, uh, it's we call a metabolic poison. It's very pernicious. We almost equate it to cigarettes because it's not just calorie in, calorie out, but there are studies in which compares jelly beans and sugary drinks. But if you eat drink sugary drinks, it causes you to overeat. It's inherently something that's poisonous to your body because it causes you to overeat and dysregulate your appetite. So this product is inherently a poisonous product. And we need to remove this poisonous product from our, um, or from our economy, from our society. But obviously, that takes a partnership of government, society, consumers, and business. But it tastes good. Dr. Vong? Definitely. It tastes good. But, <laughs> you know, here's the problem. We are at, we are currently in 2016 are standing at the prefaces, uh, precipice of a cliff. This is the first time in our world history that our children will, leave, will live shorter lives than we do. And yeah. the reason will be obesity. And so we are really standing on this. We have to decide as caretakers of our gen future children generation, what are we going to do? Are we going to allow our children to live shorter lives than we do? Do we want that? All right, but, but, but Dr. Fang, as I said, it tastes good. So can we reduce our desire for the short-term happiness, maybe one minute or two, drinking the soda types of uh, sweet beverages, and look at the future? Or actually, this is a very hard choice that people have to make all the time. Can we be helpful, helping them to make the choice? Actually, it is very difficult to help them or just to stop those people drinking those kind of soda or other like uh, sugar or um, like added uh, drinks because you know what? People like them. The taste is really good. So definitely we need a lot of um, strategies, uh, health education and uh, so the promotion for the government and also the lifestyle. So those kind of things are definitely should be uh, like uh, consider that. Well, easier said than done. You know the China situation very well, I guess, the Dr. Fang. If you look at the obese problem in this country, it's mm -hmm. getting ever more severe. Uh, it was a time, uh, only decades ago, people look at China and say, this country has no obesity problem. Mm -hmm. But you look at the kids these days, especially the so-called only child of the family, they are being taken care of very well, namely, uh, in a way is to let them to do whatever they want to do. Of course, uh, soda, sweet beverages, uh, fried chicken, and all of these uh, high calorie things are the favorites of the children. But then how can we look at the current situation of China? China is a big country. If China cannot solve the problem, the world can't solve the problem. So what is China doing at this moment, Dr. Fang? Definitely, um, we should look at the history of the Chinese uh, diet because in the past the diet is very very healthy with a lot of uh, vegetable and a lot of uh, fruits. But now, if you look at the the Chinese uh, the, like uh, the styles for the eating styles, so most of the the, the packed food or packaged food and were f uh, purchased uh, from the outside, and also people don't cook anymore and the eating out those kind of things definitely are related to the income people are rich and then they can eat out or take out so that is definitely 
a strategy. We should promote a lot of uh, eating habits, a healthy eating instead of just uh, so many commercial products uh, from the refrigerator. Uh, but but you know, uh, Dr. Fang, let's just be pragmatic mm -hmm. here. Uh, even about your family, mm -hmm. when you go back home, you would n seldom have the chance to do the home cooking. Mm -hmm. Let's just say on an ordinary working day. That's why the service business here in Beijing mm -hmm. and in other metropolitan cities are getting ever more uh, in a way better but but the thing is how can you make sure in such a rapid developing society strategies can also be applied that people feel pragmatic people can use and they can in a way self-disciplined as a result uh, one of the strategy actually is um, you have to look at them ask them to look at the nutrition uh, on the pack the the, the, uh, the products so um, I have one survey for the children and also for the fam uh, for the parents, and very very few of them just look at the ingredients and the nutrition mm -hmm. fact on those kind of packaged, uh, the products or the food. So if you look at oh how much for the the fat and how much for the calories and how much for the cholesterol they eat, definitely they will be very very helpful for them. Mm. Mm. Uh, but. Uh, Dr. Rastan, yeah. I think uh, it's an ideal situation. Dr. Fang has been talking about. If you go to Chinese restaurants, nobody is going to line up all the calories of every dish, the pink duck, mm -hmm. and also the, those pancakes. Those are healthy food anyway. Mm -hmm. But but what are the solutions? Do you think for such a huge country? This country is very diverse. Mm -hmm. You got agrarian society. Mm -hmm. You also got very much a, uh, a metropolitan uh, cities, mm -hmm. uh, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Any one kinds of methods to solve the problem? Well, uh, if we look at the problem, the problem is, a, is one that combines societal factors, economic factors, and cultural factors. Mm. And so the, the solution has to address it from a systemic point of view too. So I agree that there needs to be education, there needs to be incentives to, for people to eat better, but there also needs to be a concerted effort to create an environment where children can play outside safely, mm. where the air quality is good so that it can play outside, where healthy foods are less expensive than unhealthy mm. foods, where uh, people have access to the right kinds of foods and they see modeled behavior that they want to emulate, so their parents and grandparents. Right. So. Uh, this problem has to be addressed from a systemic point of view. Mm. And of course, various governments have been trying their own ways in order to solve the problem. Your home country, United States, for mm. example, has a big obesity problem. Huge. And huge problem. And of course, even the first family, Dr. Ding, inside the United States has been trying very hard to be the role model mm. uh, of uh, the society. But Dr. Ding, has that really worked? We know even the first lady, Michelle Obama, uh, Go out with those kids, try mm. to do exercises, planting trees, work in the garden in order to grow their own vegetables just to demonstrate how the healthy lifestyle could it be. But it sounds more like a fairy tale rather than a reality, mm. unfortunately. Well, I think um, all these initiatives are very, very important from Michelle Obama's healthy eating and wellness initiatives. But what you have to realize to tackle this problem, this is a societal problem. You need a society-wide solution. One, government initiatives are not enough. Pushing businesses to change or taxing the products is not enough. And, and telling people in education alone is not enough. You need a combination of government um, lab uh, forced labeling, uh, removal of uh, unhealthy uh, toxins, uh, taxing unhealthy products combined with the social environment, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you know, so that children can go out to play, but also you need a social network. And there's, the, there's a lot of programs out there that's now emerging focused on leveraging the power of social networks, the community. Because one person trying to diet alone is n it will, in isolation will never work. You need governments, you need business, and mm -hmm. you need these societal social network problems. Um, and I think that it, together, only when all the three pieces come together can you uh, really uh, put a dent and stop it. 
and stop our children from living shorter lives mm -hmm. than than us. Dr. Rustai, it is not the first time, not the second time, not the third time we heard from the United States that mm -hmm. uh, obesity is a big problem. It's been decades. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you think are the most uh, workable solutions that the, your country has figured out so far? Can that be learned and shared with other cultures and societies? I'm not certain my country has figured mm -hmm. it out. Uh, this is still uh, a huge problem in the United States. It's a huge problem in all affluent countries. Uh, and now developing countries and, as well. And developing countries as well as countries emerge into affluence. One of the first things they want to do is consume more food, calorie dense food. And uh, it, it, there's, it's a sign of social um, status sometimes to be able to do this. So um, it, the US has its own considerations, mm. uh, obesity and overweight tends to be uh, a problem of less affluent people in the United States. Yes, indeed. And uh, there's, uh, there's reasons for this. Um, in most of the rest of the world, uh, obesity and overweight tends to go with affluence. So the, the, the solutions might be a little bit different in China than, than in America. One of the things, uh, Dr. Rostein, is how to make sure people understand what is healthy trend mm -hmm. and how to make sure we are going to establish the right role models for them to make sure that we are going to have quote unquote a revolution of ideas mm. that people bear in mind when they go to restaurants when they make their life choices as to what to eat and what not is that possible can that trend can that quote unquote revolution start from developed economies such as the United States, or it has to start from somewhere like China, where the agrarian society has been having a very healthy eating habits until only over the past 15 or 20 years, Dr. Rustine. Well, if we, if we learn from other um, public health epidemics and what's t what it has taken to address them, smoking, for example, um, it's clear that to make the biggest impact on smoking, you have to start with children. I think the same is probably true mm -hmm. with overweight and obesity. Focus on the children right. before they develop the, the habit. And this is what, what is so alarming about the growing obesity and overweight epidemic among children in China. Yes, indeed, not only in China, but also worldwide as well. Mm. 41 million uh, children under the age of five are being classified as uh, so-called uh, obese. Uh, Dr. Ding, uh, what do you think is the solution? Where can we start that revolution? Mm. Uh, and who is going there going to start the revolution, quote unquote, Dr. Ding, briefly from you? Yeah. Well, I think the revolution will start, will require a a consortium of co countries to band together that tells some of these big corporations, look, you can sell products and like drinks, but you cannot sell them with such high sugar levels. Mm. And you can sell products, but you have to, t you have to, you must label the calories on them so people can uh, know how to do that. And governments have to really fund grassroots, not just top down, but also grassroots social network. Uh, intervention programs right. um, that really gets entire communities. You can't just tell one person uh, to lose weight and they will never listen to you, but you have to change the entire society. Yes, and indeed. let me tell you, the developing world is actually even worse than the, uh, uh, in, because obesity and diabetes and, and many of these uh, cholesterol can't be checked. They don't, there's not enough funding or, uh, uh, or medicine right. to actually reduce diabetes. So I think these, we have to prevent them. Okay. And governments have to realize the cost savings they get. All right. Dr. Fang, what about from China? Very briefly, you got only 20 seconds. I think it is a very, very good idea just to focus on children because you know what? In the last 10 years, the overweight and the obesity rate in China has been doubled, and then this will be tripled in maybe in 10, another 10 years. So I think there are so many products available. That is a problem. All that right. is a problem.